Thank you. Good evening. Um, I think the first point I'd like to make that our, our cities are not about buildings. They're basically about people. And um, cities work because people are there. They're um, the lifeblood of the city. <coughs> A lot of cities in the world, uh, they're all different, but they're actually all the same because people want the same things. And cities are the marketplace. And so long as you keep remembering that, that they're places of exchange, then you understand how cities work. I, I travel to a lot of cities around the world, we see the same things. And the first thing I always do, for the first time I go to a city, is I walk. I walk for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and you get an idea of the priorities of that city. This is the person with the purse. This is the person with the money. They have to be number one for economic, environmental, and quality of life reasons. And often, they're not. And one of the things we, the, the, the most important thing we have to do is to turn around our city so that they are the number one economic reason uh, for, for, for um, enhancing the economy and the environment and, and the life uh, of, our, of our city. And the successful cities have done this uh, over the years. And basically there's only two kinds of exchange space in cities. Copenhagen started doing this in the 60s. And lots of cities around the world, like Seoul and, and New York, are doing the same thing. There is only exchange space and movement space. You get them out of balance, your city doesn't work. And the two things you have to do, there are seven good reasons, but the, the two things you have to do is maximize exchange space, minimize movement space. So if, you're, if you remember nothing else about your city, maximize exchange space, minimize movement space. This is New York, what they're doing just now. It doesn't have to be expensive. A few shrubs and a few tables. And they are recreating that exchange, reclaiming that exchange space in the city. Seoul has taken a whole expressway in the middle of the city, not replaced it with any capacity, and recreated the river and, and, and walkways outside. Economically works, environmentally works, quality of life goes up, security goes up. And the reason it doesn't work is not politics, it's arithmetic. Look at the, the, the capacity that one car needs, the dynamic capacity, never mind the static, the dynamic. It doesn't work. The arithmetic doesn't work. That's why the good cities have good walking, cycling, and transit. It's not political. It's actually arithmetic in terms of the capacity. And there's a chance to put this right because when you look at the trends around the world, and you see these in every city of the world, spans geography and culture, you end up in the future that the mobility that's going to be in the cities are going to be three things. User-focused, end-user-focused, seamless, this mode stuff has got to go, car versus bus and all that kind of stuff. One seamless mobility city. And it's going to be valued. And it's going to happen for three reasons. First of all, retailers have done the same analysis. And they, are, they have moved and are moving from being product providers to lifestyle providers. You can see it happening. This is Urban Outfitters. Tesco's doing the same thing. You can buy anything in Tesco's. So they've done the same analysis. Second thing that's happened, the technology is going to deliver that to you. Big growth of trends throughout the world as personalized services because our lives are getting more complex. The technology people through NFC phones, smartphones and whatever are going to deliver that. So you are going to get personalized services in the future and that includes mobility. And that is a great opportunity as well because it, it saves money but it also generates huge revenue, revenue streams and allows you to balance the city. This is Nice. They are all using, they're already using smartphones, not only to pay for your ticketing on the new tram, but to pay for offers uh, and, and shops and, and, and um, restaurants and whatever, and give you information about the city. This is the future. This is what's going to happen in, in the future. San Francisco, the latest parking app in San Francisco tells you where the spaces are, but not only are they doing that, they're controlling price as well. So you can now shape the city, with where, where, and, and you can provide, provide a better service to customers. And, and you can balance the city in that particular way. There's, there's, Talon's got the same system, uh, Auckland's looking at the same system as well. And it's been driven by smart networks as well and social networking. Uh, look at the evolution of, from customer relationships management to social CRM. It's all going a specific individual way, personalized services. And what's the key thing that people want? This is all based on retailing principles. The key thing they look for is incentives and value. And so transport, mobility, the way the city works have got to move from an operational, stale, silo-based vertical model to a retail-based incentive choice model. That's the key to the future in terms of shaping the city that we live in. And it's a huge uh, opportunity for us uh, to do that uh, in the future. These are the plans that I've been doing for 40 years of my life as a transport planner, a transport policy planner. And you need these big strategic plans. Why they don't often work and why some of the road user charging things didn't work in the past it's because they've forgotten this bit. That's the bit the retailers do. That's the bit the Tesco's of this world and Walmart's been doing for ages. And when the cities that bring the two of them together, then it works. 
And this is what you need in the middle. This is what you're going to need in the future in the middle. And the key question for the public and private sectors in the future is if not, is this going to happen? It is going to happen, but who's going to drive this? Because whoever is driving this is, drive, is driven by the objectives of the city. And they're driven by this kind of productization of the services to you, the customer, and me uh, in the future in terms of this typical discover, design, develop, and deliver. And there's going to be a whole lot of products. Some of them will be apps. Some of them will be delivered in all sorts of other ways, text-based and, and on a whole computer or whatever. But they're going to be put together in a personalized lifestyle for you. We've begun to do this. And these are some of the apps that we have designed. Car Freedom is for people who have to get out the car. Uh, Tracker Bat is for parents who want to know where their young children are. And uh, Grad Pack is for new graduates and whatever. That's the future, and we have to learn how to use that future for the benefit of the city in terms of creating a better economy. There's a whole set of skills that we will need. My fear is that the public sector and the city authorities will not be able to react fast enough to this because they are silo-based. This is not. This is this base. It's flexible. It's open. It's fast. And so we need to find ways to react to that. And because we, this will all be transparent to you and I, we'll be in the middle here. And we'll be getting all these things and it'll all be joined up for us. You want a taxi, a bus, whatever, that's fine. You want to book a taxi. But this is where the money's to be made. We will be offered all sorts of value-added services. Happening in Hong Kong, Singapore. And it's happening elsewhere in the world. So there's money to make this happen. So in terms of the future of the future city and, 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 and making uh, the city work, we just got to remember these things, three th from my point of view, of what, how the good cities in the world work. Cities are about people. Um, they're all different, but they're the same. It's that marketplace, and there's only two kinds of it, it, uh, place. Maximize exchange space, minimize movement space, but maximize the productivity of that movement space, and that means transit, walking, and cycling. With car, in, in, in harmony with the car. It will not work uh, any other way. And to use that future that is going to come for the benefit not only of myself and each of you as individuals, but for the benefit of society and the benefit of the city.